What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So in a previous video, I tested out the RevoPoint Inspire 3D Scanner, which is their newest one. And today we're going to do a comparison between the Inspire and their POP3 3D Scanner. So we'll go over some of the differences and kind of do some comparison tests to see how they kind of compare to each other. But I'll get this all opened up, we'll get it set up next to each other, and we'll go from there. So right off the bat, I can see that the POP3 comes with this really nice leather case where the Inspire didn't come with any case, it was just standalone, so there was nothing to put this in after it was all put together, and if I wanted to take this on the go, I would have to just throw it in my bag and hope it doesn't get scratched or banged up. But with the POP3, it does come with a nice case. So upon opening this up, you can see that it comes with the turntable, another tripod, which is exactly, pretty much exactly the same as the one that came with the Inspire. The scanner itself. It comes with a little model for you to test out, if I can get that out. And on the other side, it has all the cords you're going to need, along with the marker dots. And unlike the Inspire, the POP3 does actually come with a quick start manual that looks like it goes into detail on how everything works. So I'll get this one all set up and then we'll do a side by side so you can see the differences between the two. So here we have a side-by-side -side comparison, and I laid these flat just so you can kind of see them a little bit better. On the left we have the Inspire, and on the right is the POP3. And as you can tell, the POP3 is much wider compared to the Inspire. As you can see over here on the POP3, this has four infrared fill lights. You can see two on the left and two on the right, whereas the Inspire only has one on the left and one on the right. Also on the Inspire, only has one white LED light, where the POP3 has two, one on top and bottom. They both have dual depth cameras, one on the left and one on the right, same with on the POP3. The projectors are located in the same spot, right in the middle. And the RGB camera is also just one of each, one on the POP3 right here, and the Inspire is right there. Here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. And we'll move to the back to see the differences on the back. On the Inspire, you do have the start pause button, same with on the POP3, but the POP3 also has buttons to increase and decrease the exposure. And they both have USB-C connection ports, which are right on the left-hand side. So one thing I did notice on the POP3 compared to the Inspire is the little quick connect when attaching the scanner. You can just push the little button and it pops right off and when it snaps back on, it actually locks into place. That way it has no chance of falling off where if you don't tighten the little screw on the Inspire, it tended to kind of, it could wiggle loose on you when you're trying to scan, especially if you're doing it handheld and you're trying to get different angles. So I definitely like the little quick connect on the POP3. So I'm going to run a few different scans using both the Inspire and the POP3, and I'll do the same piece with both, and I'll test this one first, and then I'll probably do a few other ones just to kind of see how the scans turn out using both of them. So I'm not going to go over all the software and how to use it and, and all that, because I did that in the previous video with the Inspire, and if you want to check out that video, I'll put a link right up there so you can check that out. But I'll get these all hooked up to my computer, we'll start scanning some things, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I have the RevoPoint Inspire hooked up first, so we're gonna try this scan. And as you can see over here, you can see the depth camera and the RGB camera, and I'm just gonna position this so over here on the right. I'm gonna try and keep it in that excellent good position. And right there looks about good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click Start, and we'll scan this one. 
so I'll do one full rotation and then I'll hit pause. So I'll rearrange this and we'll scan it one more time. And we'll re-click start. And that seems good, so I'll click pause. We can take a look at it. And it does look a little goofy, but I'm gonna go ahead and click the one-click editing. We'll click complete. And we'll see how this kind of fixes it. So that has finished on this one-point click edit. And taking a look at this, I think that looks really good. Now I did miss a few spots in here, but I'm not too worried about that, as I was just doing this a quick, quick scan and test just to see how it kind of comes out with the Inspire first, but I can go into Fusion and into Mesh and I can remove all of these unwanted points. I can highlight it, delete it. You get the idea. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I'm gonna get the POP3 hooked up now and we'll see how that scan compares. And I'm actually going to rename this to Inspire Test 1 and the next one I'll rename to POP3 Test 1. So now I have the POP3 connected, and over here in the scan settings, on the Inspire, I only had standard accuracy and high speed, and I have high accuracy now with the POP3, so I'm gonna use the high accuracy. I'll keep it on feature tracking and object type. I'll keep it as general. I'm not gonna hide the surfaces just like the previous one on the Inspire, and the scanning distance, I will just remain the same as well. So I have this all set up, for the most part, in excellent, good range, so I'll click Start, and we'll let this scan and do a full rotation. So it did the full rotation. I'll hit pause, and we're going to reposition this model again, and we'll do one more scan. All right, I repositioned the model, so I'll go ahead and click start, and do one more full rotation. And I'll click pause. So just like previously with the Inspire, I'll click complete. And then I'll click on one click edit. And click apply. So that is complete. And here you can see the final model. And again, I am missing a little hole in the bottom or in the back and kind of bottom too. But I'm not too worried about that. All I have to do is just rotate it again, scan it again to get that other part but I think that is looking really good. Again, I can go into mesh and I can remove some of these points that are just not needed, like so. And I'll just remove these as well, get rid of that. So I'll just rename this to pop three. And looking at the detail, I think this is really well. I'll go look at the Inspire again and see if I notice any differences. Let's click back to home, we'll save that. Go back to the Inspire test. And I think that, that they're looking really, really close. It's hard to tell, maybe I'll just take a screenshot and put up side by side so you can see a little bit better. So here's a side by side comparison. On the left we have the Inspire and on the right is the POP3. And they look very, very similar I think if I zoom in, I think if you look at like the lips, I think on the Aspire it's not as good as the POP3, but it's, it's so hard to tell, it's really close. You can kind of see like in the ear maybe, like the definition, same with along the neck. It kind of looks a little bit cleaner and smoother on the POP3, but again, it's, really, really close, and I can't really tell much difference between the two. So again, instead of the one-click edit, I could go into Fusion and change the point distance and maybe make it a little bit smaller. I might be able to get a little bit better detail off of it, but for comparison's sake, I wanted to keep everything exactly the same and just use their standard one-click editing based off of the software and what it decides is best. So I'll go ahead and I'll scan one more item and we'll kind of see how that compares. So I'll get that set up and we'll be right back. So since I already have the POP3 hooked up, I'm just gonna continue on with this one first. 
So I'll try out this gargoyle that my friend sent me a while back. So I will keep the accuracy at high feature tracking, general object. I will do color scanning on this one. I will click on hide surfaces and the scanning distance. I will just have it set to standard. I won't adjust any of that. So I'll go ahead and I'll click start and we'll run a full rotation on this. So once again as well, I'll turn it on its side. Click start. And once again, I'll click complete. And here you can see how it looks with the color. If I disable the color, that's how it's looking. And it doesn't look like I really missed anything other than these two little spots back there. And I could flip it over and scan it again but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and click one click editing and we'll click apply. So here is the model and I think this is looking really well. There are some holes on the back just as I thought because I didn't flip it over and scan that side, but I'm not too concerned about that. I will just go ahead and remove this part, click delete, get rid of it. So overall, I think that looked good with the color you can see. That's how it looks. And I think it picked up the detail really well, even with it being reflective. So I'll just rename this POP3 Test 2. And we'll run a new scan now with the Inspire, and we'll see how that one compares when doing this one. So I have the Inspire hooked up, and I tried to set the camera up to about the same exact spot that I had it with the POP3. And it kind of shows a little bit too far and some's in excellent, some's in good. So I think that's okay. And as you can see here, I do not have the high accuracy again. So I'm just going to set it to standard and I'll keep it on color scanning and I'll keep it on hide services and the distance remains the same. So I'll click start. We'll do a full rotation. We'll flip it over and we'll scan it one more time. So I'll go in and I'll click complete. I'll do the one click edit again and we'll see how that turns out. So here is the gargoyle with the Inspire and rotating around. I think it missed the same exact spots as the other one because I didn't rotate it that other direction to get those areas. But I think just like with the POP3, this came out really well as, as well. I will rename this one Inspire Test 2. So if I want to see a comparison side by side inside of Rebel Point Scan, I can go into Merge and I can click on both of these. And here I can see this side by side comparison. And they look pretty, pretty close to the same. I think the POP3 does pick up a little bit better detail because I am able to put it on the high accuracy compared to just the standard with the Inspire. But I think that's pretty close in comparison. I can't see much difference between the two. So I'll just cancel out of this because I'm not going to merge them. But if I wanted to, I could. I can click OK and merge them. So I went ahead and scanned one more item using both the uh, Inspire and the POP3. And this is the Inspire, as you can see right here. It's this zombie wine holder I have. And I think this came out really well. You can see some little hiccups here in the hand that it kind of screwed up. But I can go through and mesh all that up and, and remove it. But the level of detail, I think it turned out great. Again, here in the hand, you can see kind of a, a little hiccup that it had. And if I go into the POP3, I think this came out really well as well. You can see some kind of screwy marks up here that weren't there in the Inspire. As you can see, that's smooth. And in here, it's a little bit wonky, but I can easily smooth that out. That's not really a big deal. But I think the detail on both came out really well. And this is a little bit darker object, and it's a little bit 
more oddly shaped, which made it a little bit more difficult to scan. Now I didn't really take as much time on it as I wanted to, and I probably could have got this to come out a lot better, but overall I'm, I'm happy with how it did. And just for comparison's sake, between the two scanners, I think they both work really well, and the level of detail is, is good on both of them. You can see here on the bottom left that the vertices and the polygon count, this one has 1.6 million, and when I go into the Inspire, this one has just over a million, and the detail still looks really good on both. All right, so there you saw the comparison between the Inspire and the POP3, and these were the three pieces that I scanned, and here was that first one. And this one does come with the Revo Point, the POP3. This was the gargoyle that I scanned, so you can see a size. And this was the last one, this zombie wine holder piece that I have. And you can see that it is kind of dark in color, but both of them picked them up pretty well. So I think comparing the two, I got virtually almost identical results when it came to the accuracy and the quality. I think the POP3 might be slightly better, but it's so hard to really tell between the two, even when I put up the side-by-side -side comparison, that you can't really see much of a difference. But again, I do think the POP3 does come out just a little bit ahead of the Inspire, but that's just me. So I'll put up the specs on screen right now so you can see the differences between the Inspire and the POP3. And these are just going to be the main ones that really stand out. The rest are all kind of pretty much similar, so I won't really put those up. And you can go on their website and learn a little bit more about each one. But here they are. So I think the main differences that stand out to me the most on the camera itself is on the back of the POP3, you do have the up and down for the contrast to make it lighter and darker. And on the Inspire does not have that. They both have the pause and start button. And on the front, you can see that the POP3 does have the extra LED infrared lights. Both the Inspire and the POP3 do come with the little mobile stand right here that you can connect your phone to and the tripod, which is adjustable in height. One thing I definitely would recommend, regardless of which model you get, even if it's the Range or the Mini, I would go ahead and get this mobile kit, which is definitely useful if you're doing something on the go, and this is a little battery pack that goes with it. So you can easily connect it and have power if you wanna just take this anywhere you want and scan something without having to haul your computer around with you. So as of right now, the POP3 is listed on their website at $599 while the Inspire is on Kickstarter still currently, and I think it's going for $329. So that's about a $300 difference. And when you look at the scans overall, they're very similar and almost identical in accuracy. So I really don't know if I can justify spending $300 more for the POP3 than the Inspire. But then again, you are getting the carrying case, you're getting the test model, and you're getting a few extra bonus features on the POP3 that the Inspire doesn't have, like the extra buttons on the back, the LED lighting, and things like that. And it is slightly better accuracy, but I don't know if that's enough to justify $300. If you're just scanning certain things and you just want to take it on the go to scan some quick models, either one is probably going to do just fine for you and probably give you almost identical results. So I guess the choice is yours, but for me, I would probably go with the Inspire over the POP3 just to save on some money, and you're really not getting a whole lot more for the POP3 than the Inspire. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, everybody. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.